And then we have our student panelists. So we have Mena. Mena is a fourth year design student. Um, she's focusing her studies on design for social impact. And she recently returned from an exchange semester in Melbourne, Australia. Ryan is going into his third year of the film production program. Um, he's not sure about his specialty yet, but he's hoping to either go into documentary or fiction for next year's studies. And then we also have Gloria. Gloria is from Sherbrooke, Sherbrooke Quebec, and is going into her fourth year in the acting conservatory in our theater program. She's been a student ambassador with us for two years and has also served on the Winters College Council. Welcome, Gloria. So with that, we're gonna to transition to our incredible student leaders featuring our panelists, Gloria, Ryan, and Mena. Thank you, Jason. And again, welcome to our, to our SAMs. I see that there are lots of questions in the, in the chat. We're definitely, uh, we will get to them. Um, before we get to, to specific individual questions, I, I, I did wanna just kind of, you know, get the ball rolling with our, with our, uh, with our students here today and, and pose to them just a kind of preliminary question, which is to, to invite you to kind of talk about, you know, thinking back to when you were starting uh, low these many years ago, right? Um, and, you know, entering AMPD in, in your various programs um, and, and thinking about, you know, where you wanted to be, where you wanted to, to you know, start your, your uh, you know, university career. Um, what, what stood out for you as, as the key decisions to come to AMPD at York? Um, I think for me personally, was seeing the breadth of work that the students were producing. I had some friends that were already going to York and I saw that they were in the design program and the work was just phenomenal. And I thought, wow, like I could be capable of doing something like that. So that's what persuaded me. Yeah, um, for me, uh, it was, first of all, shout out to everyone from Montreal. I'm really excited to see people from Quebec. I was happy for that. But yeah, for me, um, I've wanted to be like in a bustling city, let's say. So Toronto is a really cool option for me. And on top of that, I also really, really appreciated the facilities that we have um, that, and, and also the environment and the ambiance. I remember coming in for my audition into the theater program and I was very, very nervous. I could barely eat, but then as soon as I came in, I was welcomed with open arms and even it being able to have like casual conversations with the faculty within five minutes of meeting them. And that was something that I didn't get in any other schools that I went to. For me, it was really similar. Um, I really liked the whole family aspect that was um, demonstrated by the York students and I'm in film, so the York filmmakers, which was really special to me. And I actually went on a tour and I met a couple film students and that whole just bond that they had and then seeing the work they were producing, I just really wanted to be a part of that. It made me feel really special to be allowed to come in and actually, you know, join up with everybody. So that's definitely why I came. Well, I, I can say, you know, without hesitation that we are really grateful that the three of you, uh, among others, did. I mean, it's, you've done so much and given so much to the school. Um, I'm, I'm curious, you know, and I imagine others might, might have this, and there's certainly some specific questions coming up about this, but can you um, uh, kind of, I, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your initial experience, right? Like when you start, we're starting a new thing, it, it's sometimes... We have ideas about what it's going to be like. Maybe we have apprehensions about it. Um, you know, were there things that were different at AMPD than you imagined, and and what were the what were some of the surprises about about starting the starting university here? Ryan, do you want to start us this time? We'll go in reverse order. Yeah, of course. Um, surprises, um, really, just how inviting it is. I spoke about the family aspect. When you're in high school, um, it, you tend to hear a lot of stories about university and sort of this like zeitgeist of what university is. It's just a lot of work and there are you know professors and it's all a lot to sort of take in. Once you get here, especially with AMPD, everyone is so inviting and so caring about you. 
um, all of my professors care about us as students, as artists, and as people. I've had professors email me if I'm not in class, if I'm sick, and ask me if I'm okay. It's little things like that that really make you feel looked out for and cared for and really goes into that family aspect that I keep talking about. When you're part of AMPD, you're really part of something. And I 100% believe in that. And I think that's really special and really great that we offer that. So I guess it's my turn. Um, yeah. yeah, so for me, um, I, I was a transfer student. So I did a, a two year college program and I got a diploma there um, in, in, in Sherbrooke. And it, it was a very, very small program. And we were like, we, my graduating class was only 10 people actually. And so I kind of was worried about coming into university and just getting kind of lost in the sea of people that's there, and especially at York because it's such a big um, population in the, in the university. But exactly, like kind of like Ryan said, the exact opposite happened. I felt very close to the people I was with because they're different class sizes that are offered, especially when it comes to more of the studio courses that are available. So then you get to have that one-on-one -on -one discussions with faculty, with other students as well, and, and, and really creating a sense of community there as well. I, I think that's one of the things that's most remarkable as I've sort of been learning more about it is, is both the kind of global access, right, in terms of what you can experience and see with, with this very close personal attention. Um, you know, Mena, what's, what's that experience been like for you? Um, for me, I was most shocked by the creativity from my peers. Uh, you know, you come to school and you think that you're going to learn from your professor and what you do and you learn so much. But I was just so surprised, like how much my peers have taught me over the years, um, just how to like grow as a creative person um, and be yourself and to explore and try new things. So that was outstanding. Well, you've certainly made a lot of your, uh, of your experience here. Um, I'm wondering, you know, before we just one last question before we get to the sort of specifics and I, I see and, and I can imagine that a lot of people are thinking about, you know, hey, what's, you know, that's like AMPD, you know, uh, in, in, you know, IRL, what does it look like in this new kind of configuration? Um, and so we'll, we'll definitely get to that. Um, but I'm wondering, you know, before we before we get to those some of those specific questions, you know, do do the three of you have any recommendations or advice or, you know, is there something that you, you know, you would want a, a, a potential incoming student to to any of the programs in AMPD to know or to uh, advice you would have for them? Go ahead, Mena. I would say to definitely be open and to try new things, um, especially being creative. If you are open minded, you can learn so much. And um, I know it's hard at first and it's scary being in a new school with lots of people, but just uh, try to push yourself to keep trying new things and grow. That's great advice. I would go along the same line as what Mena had said. Um, trying new things, getting involved. Um, in first year, I found that's when you have the most time to do a lot of things and tap into a lot of different aspects. So participating in Winters College activities, sports, um, social events, uh, tr trips even that happen. Um, if you want to be on council, you can start that in first year. Uh, there's different um, uh, student associations too that you can get involved in and meet new people. And for me, that's been like really a, a cool experience is, and what I've appreciated a lot about AMPD in general is how easy it is to reach out to people in different programs, not just in your specific program. And how about you, Ryan? I have a very similar answer, but slightly different. Um, I would say almost branch out creatively in a lot of ways. Um, when you become an artist, it becomes very easy to sort of do the same thing over and over again. Sort of if your name broke, don't fix it. Um, one thing I learned, um, this is more of a film centered answer. Um, before university, I would always write or make the same type of movie. But once I came to York, um, it sort of forced me to branch out in a more broad creative aspect. So just can I give a quick example? Of course. Um, Last year, I directed a movie for a class that um, I never thought in a million years I would direct. It was just a strange, surrealist movie. And I had never done that before. And doing it was super duper exciting. And it's now something I kind of want to focus on more in the future. Hmm. So I never thought I would do that, ever. 
and it, coming here and meeting all these people and meeting incredible artists who teach here and fellow students, it really sort of forced me to look at how I want to go forward creatively and find new avenues to use as a creative outlet. So that was really exciting to me. That's really cool. Um, before we get to, and we're going to sort of turn to the, some of the um, specific uh, submitted questions. Um, I do, uh, I do want to just address a, one kind of big overarching and then we can, you know, follow up as, as needed um, about what does fall look like? Uh, at York, and particularly, what does a fall uh, in these circumstances look like in a, a you know school of the arts? Um, what York has has decided, right? And and I've been part of these conversations, and we've looked very carefully with uh, and, and working very carefully with with folks in public health, Toronto public health, um, as well as in the province and and at the federal level. Um, our number one priority, as it is for everybody, right, is, is the health and safety of, of our community, our faculty and staff, our students, those who might choose at some point to live on campus, those who uh, uh, are commuting from, from you know, nearby or, or maybe even quite far. Um, so we're, health and safety is really uh, uppermost in our mind. Uh, the next real critical issue for us is access. So we know that uh, regardless of what we're doing in the fall, perhaps not everyone can or will be able to um, or will want to or feel comfortable being on campus physically. So what we've done is, is redesign our courses to make sure that they are available and that course options are there regardless of whether you're around the corner or around the world. Um, and this is where our experience in e-learning really comes into play because we're able to not just uh, uh, we're able to not just focus on uh, synchronous learning, but we can explore asynchronous learning. I'm also really excited because we've been able to um, really, in, in a kind of uh, shocking amount of time, develop studio options. So one of the, one of the questions that I saw was like, will it, will it just be academic classes? And certainly I think that would be easier, right? We'll all just do large history lectures and, and people can do you know, individual tutorials and boom, everybody's, you know, back on, on Zoom. But we've actually worked very closely in every program to develop hands-on experiential studio-based practices um, that you can do remotely. Um, and this, in, this is everything from ceramics to performance to um, different kinds of, of media making as well. We are hoping that there will be opportunities for select um, and very small gatherings um, on campus. We're still exploring those options. Um, and before we do anything uh, and make any decisions about, about what will be available, we're also exploring and looking at what, what uh, security and, and safety measures we can put in place um, to ensure that if anyone is on campus, they are completely safe. So we're securing supply lines for personal protection equipment. We're looking at how to ensure social distancing in all of our spaces. We've mapped out our studios to ensure that we know exactly how many people can be in a given space and what, what is needed to keep them safe. So I, I believe that there will be lots of options in the fall. You'll be able to start your career uh, in whatever way you want, um, uh, have options to do that. Um, the last thing I'll simply say about that is, um, as we kind of look at the next year, I keep reminding people that that really it's, it's, uh, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. So lots of different people, and lots of different programs are gonna start in lots of different places. The real question is, um, can we make sure, you know, where do we finish? And, and my goal as, as the Dean of the school is to ensure that we finish in a place where everybody's healthy, everybody's connected, uh, everybody is involved and everybody has uh, an, uh, equal access and opportunity. And I believe that we've put in place the systems that we need in order to do that. And, and we'll continue to work on that over the next several weeks and certainly over the summer to get ready for fall in whatever mode of, of course delivery is, is, is happening. I don't know if there's a good way to moderate all of the other questions here. I'll hop in here, Sarah. Thank you Thanks, very much Laura. for that answer. Um, I think we're gonna move into, we have a few specific questions about 
things like enrollment. Um, so a few people have asked about enrollment appointments and when that can be expected. And also we had a question about the requirements for the first year. So they were asking about our FA 1900, our natural science requirements, things like that. Now, uh, Ryan and Gloria, you guys are also our U-Start leaders. Um, so you're helping with enrollment and things like that. I was wondering if you guys could touch on that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, so for enrollment, um, they have been pushed to June 8th. So starting June 8th, that's when all enrollment windows are going to be opening and each individual person is going to have a different enrollment appointment or window. So um, what you can do is go online and type in enrollment window York U and then you'll be able to find uh, all the information you need to find um, how you can enroll and when your enrollment window is going to open. And you don't have to uh, enroll at that day on that specific time. That just means that now you are able to enroll and you can take your time in selecting your courses and making sure that all of the courses work well for you as well. Uh, to add on that, make sure you select your program courses and then add your 1900s and nats and all that around that to make sure that there's no schedule conflicts as well. I believe at that time too, you're also going to be receiving a list of your course requirements for your degree. So it'll tell you exactly how many like nat sci courses or how many 1900 courses you need to take in order to graduate. Can you tell people what that means for those of us who aren't in on the code? Oh, yes. Um, you have to take your, so there's your normal degree requirements that pertain to your major. So again, speaking of film, you have your like film studies classes or your screenwriting classes. But then you also have general education, which could be your, like your science courses or your history courses or your psychology courses. And you need a certain amount of those credits in order to graduate and get your degree. So what will, what will happen is um, when enrollment opens, you'll be receiving a package that has your degree breakdown basically. And it shows exactly when and where you can sign up for your classes, how many credits you need to take for each one. Great, thank you. Um, on a related note, I have had a few questions surrounding double majors and minors. And we also have somebody on the chat from uh, who's doing a Bachelor of Science. So welcome. And they were asking about our courses. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to answer this one. Um, anybody who's interested in a double major or a minor can add that starting in December of their first year of studies. So they want to make sure you have a semester under your belt, see what your grades are like, and also make sure you're settled into your own program. Not every program allows for double majors or minors. For example, design and digital media do not allow for those, but there is room for electives in those courses. All of the other courses, it depends on what you want to pair with, but there is lots of options for double majors and it's very popular with our students as well. Um, so you can do that once you're a student starting in December. And for the science students, um, there are lots of courses available to non-majors within AMPD. I think uh, Acting for Non-Majors is one of the most popular programs at York in general. Um, and also you'd have the opportunity of adding an AMPD minor if you'd like to do that as well. Um, somebody asked what a typical day in a BFA program is like. So maybe uh, each of you could walk through a typical day for you. We'll start with Mena. Um, so a typical day for me would probably be um, going to class, um, having fun in class, <laughs> and then I usually hang out on campus um, in between classes. We have spaces where in the design building you can hang out or you can hang out um, in the AMPD like faculty area. Um, so I usually hang out there and catch up with friends and um, sometimes share my design ideas with them. So we kind of collaborate in between our classes um, and then head to my second class for the day. Mena, what classes did you typically have? Like how many studio hours? I usually had three studio classes and two studies or two natural science or other electives. But they usually say not to overwhelm with studio classes to have two to three per semester. Okay, Gloria. 
Yeah, so I, I think I'll do more of a first year typical day versus what I'm doing now because then it changes a lot depending on streaming. Um, so in first year, uh, the way that the classes are divided is that you have a lot of two classes that are in lecture style. So it's all of the people in, in your year in the theater program are gathered, they're in one room and are sitting down for a lecture. So those are Thursdays and um, Fridays for the history lecture and the stagecraft lecture. And then Mondays and Tuesdays, uh, those are the days for your studio classes. So on Monday, you'll have your acting studio class. And then on Tuesday, you'll have your stagecraft studio class. So in those classes, then that's when you learn like sewing, uh, uh, carp carpentry, um, lighting, and sound sometimes and depending on this first or second semester um but yeah so in first year i would say it's a really good balance between studio and lecture courses so that you're, you're able to uh, get the information before you actually get your hands on but like all at the same time so it's con more concrete while you're doing it yeah I'm, yeah I'm gonna do the same thing gloria did because it sort of changes throughout the year so i'll focus more on a first year day um, very similar to theater, um, we have more practice, less, sorry, more lecture based in the beginning of the week. And then more in the middle towards the end is where there's a lot more studio time. And that's so we do sort of get um, hands on experience before we go into the more studio based stuff afterwards. So it's a really great way to get to know your professors, your peers, before you go into a more practical environment, which is a lot more hands-on and a lot more personal so having that basis and sort of that like background is hugely beneficial um, and then as you go throughout the years um, it becomes a lot more practical and then the lectures sort of sit, stay in the same area but you'll add more and more studio time as you go forward Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, we had somebody else ask about the size of first year courses. Did you guys want to comment a bit on first year and then upper year courses and their sizes? Should I go first? Sure. Um, in, in film first year, um, the class sizes are um, much larger. Um, so um, I think there's actually a Q&A question that talks about whether all the film programs sort of like screenwriting and studies and production sort of interact with each other. Um, I can kind of do a dual thing because it actually pertains to the answer. Um, the answer is yes, first year especially. Um, you're all sort of together in first year and then you branch out going forward, but you're still heavily connected. So in first year, um, a lot of the courses are sort of intertwined with each other. So you'll be taking screenwriting classes with the screenwriting majors and then the screenwriters could be taking a production class with all the production majors. So they're much larger class sizes. Um, that being said, going forward, they start to get smaller and smaller as you sort of stay within your major specifically. So um, I remember in my first year, I had a class with around 150 people. And then my second year, my main class was like 60 people. Because they sort of break down from there. But you do interact with like, say, screenwriting and production or intertwined all the time. So you'll be making screenwriting students films, for example, and they'll be writing for you. It's everything sort of intertwined and the class sizes sort of reflect that going forward. Okay, how about Gloria? Yeah, so in first year, um, in the theater program, we're, I believe we're the largest program in AMPD, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and so in first year, we have like a re over, I think around 130, 150 people in the lecture classes. But then um, for, let's say the theater history course, we're divided into tutorials afterwards. So those end up being maybe 20, 25 people per tutorial. And then with the stagecraft class, class, we're also all together in the same class. But then on Tuesdays, when we have our stage stagecraft tutorials, um, those tutorials are divided in three hour slots throughout the day. So there are three classes and those three classes are also three separate courses. So let me say this concretely, so it's very complicated. So let's say 8.30 to 11.30, there's going to be a costuming, 
a carpentry and a lighting lab happening all at the same time, but it's three different classes. And those three time slots happen three times a day. So 8.30, 11.30, 11.30 to 2.30 and 2.30 to 5.30. So with those, even though we're over 100 people in the class, we end up being 15 or less per tutorial. So that means again, safety being our number one priority, you'll be safe in those tutorials to get to ask questions directly to the um, TA and um, yeah, and then same for acting, you're also divided into smaller labs. Those ones are about 20 to 30, depending on the amount of teacher's assistance we have for those ones as well. So yeah, even though it's a big program, it's divided in a way that you, that's how you get to connect with people more directly as well. Okay, great. Um, Next up, we have a couple of questions about extracurriculars. So they're sort of related. Somebody asked about any clubs or extracurriculars that are related to AMVD. And then somebody else asked if we have time outside of class for things like clubs and part-time jobs. Uh, let's start with uh, Mena. Yeah, you definitely do have time outside of class, um, especially in your first years in AMPD to do other things that you want. And we definitely encourage you to do so. Um, for example, from my experience, I was able to do um, the Design Student Association, which is related to AMPD. It's um, a club more focused on design. And I'm not sure if the other guys would like to contribute if there's anything related to your programs um, that you guys have clubs for. Uh, yeah, we do. I think every program in AMPD has a club. And then there's also the Creative Arts Student Association that gathers all of AMPD programs together. Um, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of things to do. Again, council is an opportunity. Sports also is a really fun way to be active and healthy and, and meet people uh, even outside of AMPD altogether. Um, and part-time jobs is definitely possible. We're all doing it, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, there's tons of clubs. There, there was a Harry Potter club. Um, there's a, um, even if you're in like residence, there's like a residence council, which is a really great way to get involved with not only um, your residents, your peers, but also like th they do a lot of like charity drives. So it's a great way to help out your community at the same time. And then outside of clubs, there's sort of like unofficial clubs where people will host like viewing parties and stuff. Like I think there was a Game of Thrones viewing one. Um, people organize like trip in film i know people organize like trips to like go see movies together even if you're not in like a club specifically there are always ways to get involved with the community and to get involved with your peers in a lot of meaningful ways um and we yeah we do offer that it's really great okay i think this might be our last question and i apologize to everybody that we didn't get to um, I mentioned in the chat, if we didn't get to your question, if it was a little more specific, we may have skipped it and you can definitely email ampd at yorku.ca and we'll answer you right away. Um, but our last question for today, uh, somebody asked, is it easy to know your professors and talk to them? Do you get lost in the crowd with big classes? High, high school classes are pretty small. Did you guys feel a big difference moving to bigger class sizes? So we'll start with Gloria. Yeah, I can. Um definitely speak to that. Um, in theater, what we, that one thing that we have that is even mandatory is uh, uh, advisors that are professors in the department and we have mandatory meetings with them once a semester. So um, you definitely will be able to get to know your professors because you have to. Um, uh, but there's also um, opportunities if you're involved in different things through a uh, crew or things like that, that you're going to be able to speak to them um, more directly through office hours or just emails or, um, or things like that. I think the people in first year specifically that you'll have the closest relationship with will definitely be your teacher's assistants because those are the ones that you're going to be seeing in smaller classes and be able to have more one-on-one -on -one contact and most likely you're going to be more comfortable speaking to them just because you have that initial contact with them as well. Okay, Ryan, what about you? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, especially, I think, in AMPD, because it is a lot more like specific and specialized, um, it's really easy to get to know your professors. So um, Gloria mentioned knowing your TAs. 
um, that's really cool. But especially going forward um, in film, I can speak to the most obviously, but um, I, especially with like smaller class sizes, like I had some classes that were maybe like 12 people, like with 12 people. So you really get one-on-one -on -one time with your professors. And it's like I said earlier, they always look out for you. Um, they're artists too. So they sort of know how to, how you're go what you're going through, sort of um, the hoops, the struggles. Um, they're always there to help you out. And having that really close, tight knit relationship with those mentors is really, really special, especially to like me personally. Getting to know them is really, really great, and it helps your education as well as helping you grow as a person. If that makes sense. And Mena. So for design, it's a little different, um, at least in my experience. We don't have as much um, of a TA system, but you do get to know your professor really well. Um, for example, in my studio courses, we usually have 30 um, people or less. So that really fosters a community for you to like build your skills with your professor, um, meaning that you'll have one-on-one -on -one critiques with them. Um, and this is really helpful. Definitely through those critiques, you'll improve your work and you will get to know them in the process. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, once again, if you have any questions that we didn't get a chance to answer, please email us and we'd be happy to connect you. Even if you want to connect directly with Gloria, Ryan, or Mena, we can do that as well, or Jason.